When we have differences amongst us as an ummah, show your children and the new generation, the, those who are up and coming, how we managed those differences. We don't need to swear and shout and scream and belittle and call names because that's not a sunnah. That's nowhere near what Islam teaches, even though you and I know and gloves off. There are scholars who do that today. Never mind. It's their weakness. And you know what? Excuse them, but don't teach that to your children. You say, listen, my child, if you differ with someone, you can register the difference respectfully without insulting the individual. That's it. Because you are part of an ummah. You are one family. Tomorrow, when disaster strikes the ummah, wallahi, we will have to stand up for one another, come what may. There was a neighbor, Muslim also, in one of the areas, and he never used to greet the other neighbor. Why? Because he belonged to what he felt was a different sect of Islam. Muslims, both Muslims. But he says, no, we can't greet, no greeting. So one day there was a visitor who came across and he greeted this man with no response. He said, my brother, I just want to tell you one thing. The day the thugs come to your place, the man who's going to rush to your assistance is this man who you're not greeting. And then he went away. And I tell you, something struck a chord. Now... The brother comes to me and says, every time he passes, Salaamu Alaikum, bhai, what's happening? Are you okay? Everything well? He says, no, mashallah. Why? It hit him to say, it's true, not just thugs. Floods can come, thugs can come, any calamity can come, an earthquake can happen, a disaster can happen. Who's there? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Jibreel alayhi salam continued to remind me about the rights of a neighbor, so much so that I felt perhaps he's going to say, when you die, your neighbor inherits a certain share of it. Because it has to be so important to have good neighbors. You've got to be a good neighbor and have good neighbors. That's your first port of call. Obviously, we call out to Allah, but what I mean is physically from humankind, there goes. May Allah protect us all. So let's be responsible as an ummah. There is hope. We are growing. We have a lot. And inshallah, we have so much of positivity. Learn to love one another. Small differences you shouldn't take to heart. They're petty things. Let them... Be released. Don't worry. Never. That's my brother. Never mind. Those are my sisters. Never mind. Look what I said. You have people who say bad things. No problem. It's their weakness. It's the... Excuse them. You keep on doing good work. One day the people will see. One of the sheikhs, when he was told about differences and so on, he said very, very simply, he drew two lines. He says, you see, this line is skew. Instead of living your life saying this line is skew and, uh, they, they, and swear the person who drew that line because it's a skew line, all you've got to do without talking, draw a straight line next to it and walk away. What happens? Anyone who passes up to the end will notice, say, hey, there's a crooked line there, but there's a straight line right next to it. The message is delivered. May Allah Almighty grant all of us goodness and forgive our shortcomings and grant us all the ability to love one another truly and may our hearts be pure and clean because as an ummah, wallahi, we need each other because that was the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ultimately, it's Allah who we need. But Allah has kept us such that with an ummah collectively, when we feel for one another as one body, that is the only time we will grow. Adam alayhi salam before that was created by Allah in his proper shape and form and he already had the height and the width and all the organs and everything and Allah blew the soul into Adam alayhi salam and Allah says وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا We taught Adam the names of everything. We taught him every, when he was created. Obviously, he wasn't born. He was created in adulthood. He already spoke. Why? Because like I called it the hard drive. The hard drive, the brain was already full of what? Whatever was needed. Allah says, we, we gave him. Is it impossible for Allah to do that for you and I? The answer is no, he can do it. But he has chosen not to. And the reason is, like I said, مَا مِنْ مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَيُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ The plan of Allah, He creates the child upon what is known as nature, natural, fitra. 
Fitra is nature. If you leave a child uncontaminated in the desert or in a land where there is no involvement of anyone else, if it was possible for that child to survive and the child survived, the child would have grown up recognizing Allah and staying away from bad and that which is harmful and evil on its own. Because Allah has created you upon nature and it would worship Allah alone because naturally a person is inclined if it is uncontaminated to turn towards the maker to acknowledge there is a supreme deity. But the problem we face is from a very young age, like the hadith says, the child is born upon nature, but the parents are guilty of making the child inclined this way or that way if it is negative. And they would be rewarded if it is positive. So in the very early stages, Allah has given you as a parent that bit of responsibility that you take care of this child and teach it goodness. The first words are from you. When you hear things and you develop a dislike against someone, don't let that dislike get to a level where you are unjust and unfair. Do you know, we are taught that when someone comes to you with something and he is your enemy, for example, the person being spoken about is your enemy, you still need to offer that person the right of saying their side of a story, always. So for example, it's wrong for me to pass judgment against someone when I haven't heard what they have to say that is injustice whether that person is your enemy or your friend you will hear a lot today we are living in an age of social media it has given a platform to anyone and everyone many people have accounts that are anonymous because they want to create mischief and you know what good people fall in the trap because there is no one to remind them firstly Allah says Min husni islam il mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'nihi. A sign of the goodness of your faith and the strength of your iman and islam is you leave that which doesn't concern you. Does it concern you? No, forget about it. But we love it. We love the gossip. It becomes juicier and juicier as though you can taste it in your mouth. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Juicy. You flick and you flick and you continue flicking until you see something. Then you forward it to your friends and you have a good laugh, not realizing what is in it. If there is something unjust, you become one of those who are going to be answerable to Allah for what you did. So remember, in this age of social media, a lot of people have a lot to say about everybody else. So much, whether it's politicians, whether it's religious personnel, whether it's a businessman, whether it's just an ordinary person walking on the street, they have a lot to say. They will label, they will say, they will argue, they will accuse, but they're not leading their own lives. In their own life, something else is happening altogether. But they are worried about everyone else's life. It's a sign of shaitan. And thereafter, the minute they see something, they immediately begin to believe it without giving the person a chance. Sometimes they don't even know that person. They have no idea who they are. But immediately they are quick to say that yes, this person is this, this person is that. Look at this and look at that. Do you know what? Here is the verse of the Quran telling you, even if it was your enemy, number one, don't be unjust. Part of injustice is to believe a tale one-sided. May Allah Almighty grant us steadfastness. so much for listening to the short message i pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh